what you have is an economic collapse and it's a global phenomenon today and it was accelerated in March of 2020. Right, the, the catalytic event, the catalyst for these things normally is a war, a war on COVID, a war on currency, a war on a lot of things. We're fighting a lot of wars right now and now we've got real wars, right? A political, an actual war in Ukraine. Wars collapse currencies, they always have. World War I collapsed the currency, World War II also damaged the currency. You can actually trace it if you look at real estate values in the years that followed the war. Right, so what we're doing is we're collapsing the currency and you could describe the entire world right now as 8 billion people. There's one strongest currency, the dollar, which is losing 15 to 20% of its value a year. That's how fast it's bleeding out. You've got a set, you've got a set of, tier, of currencies pegged to the dollar, Sing, you know, Singapore, the Middle East, the Euro, that are fairly, uh, fairly close to the dollar. Then you've got a set of second tier currencies, the peso and, and the, the Turkish lira and the like, and they're losing 40%, the, the rubble now, losing 40, 50% of the value a year. And you've got the third tier currencies, the Venezuelan, you know, the Bolivar, et cetera. They pretty much hyperinflate, they all collapse, and they're all gonna dollarize. When you have a dominant digital monopoly, the digital monopoly eats everything else, and Apple Computer is the most valuable company in the world because Apple Computer is literally the most valuable company in the world. They can ship a product to a billion people over the weekend for a nickel, and their competitors can't. So selling the winner to buy the loser is an awful strategy. <laughs> the only people that made money in the stock market in the last decade were the people that, that owned Fang. They owned Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Microsoft. There's no diversification here at all. So if you're if you're if you're investing in a stable currency, you have to keep in mind that digital monopolies uh, are dominant and they crush everything else and, and everything else goes to zero. So the only everything winning, else goes to zero. Name another retailer you'd rather own than Amazon. So you're saying Ethereum's gonna go to zero? What I'm saying is that Ethereum's a different subject, we can talk about it in a bit. What I'm saying is, if you're a conventional <coughs> investor, the winners tend to crush the losers by far, and so diversification of selling the winner to buy the losers is not a good idea. Saylor admits that Bitcoin is the most resilient thing against cyber attacks and electricity shortages that the world has ever seen. Even if the whole Bitcoin protocol goes dormant for 10 years and a single node is turned back on, the whole system will come back to life. Bitcoin is a nuclear hardened protocol. It's, it's pretty much the most robust, resilient thing the human race has yet to invent. <laughs> for example, it, it's running uh, on on tens of thousands of nodes, you can't even identify the nodes, and there's an identical copy of the Bitcoin ledger on every one of them. So if all of the electricity got shut off everywhere on Earth, and every computer failed everywhere on Earth for 10 years, the protocol just goes dormant for 10 years, and as soon as one person turns one node back on, the entire protocol comes back to life again. There's nothing like that, right? Uh, all your money in a bank and Bank of America could be wiped out with, you know, a keystroke. You go and you wipe out a few servers, you know? Your building can be wiped out with a bomb, right? Lots of things can be wiped out, but, but um, Bitcoin is the most resilient thing in cyberspace because it is so incredibly decentralized. You know, if you took if you took an entire country offline, that's irrelevant. In fact, we just saw last year during the China crackdown that China banned Bitcoin mining. They took 40 to 50 percent of the entire network offline. Half of Bitcoin money was taking place in China. The network didn't miss a beat, not even for a minute. It just kept running completely secure. You could literally wipe out 99 percent of all the nodes you wouldn't notice in the network there's nothing else that you rely upon <laughs> i can take down google and twitter and facebook and apple and amazon and the u.s government and you know there's a lot of other systems you can take down much more easily you take down bitcoin so i don't really worry about uh about bitcoin's um, fragility to any cyber attack 
In fact, the whole point of proof of work was to create something which is impervious to a denial of service attack. And it turns out that if you dig a bit deeper, what you realize is that not only is Bitcoin impervious to cyber attacks, it's also the solution to cyber attacks. Because if you want to eliminate denial of service attacks, which are the most common brute force attacks, or you want to eliminate phishing and scam and spam uh, attacks and, and other sorts of imposter and malicious behavior in cyberspace, the way to do it is to integrate a layer of monetary energy, which is what Bitcoin is, into the internet. Michael Saylor also explains why everything collapses if the currency collapses. He discusses the importance of diversification and how currencies in the world are collapsing at an alarming rate. When the currency collapses, right, give me a diversification strategy for Russian stocks right now. Which of those do you want to own? When the currency collapses, the bonds collapse that are, that are linked to the currency, all the companies that generate cash flows and the currency, they all collapse because they're valued in, as a stream of cash flows. And if the cash is worthless, how is the company going to be valued? Right? You sell beef in Argentina, the peso collapses, the people are buying the beef in peso. So you want to sell the beef to Europeans for euros. The government passes a law keeping you from selling the beef or exporting your beef. Export controls come, wage and price controls come. So the problem is every equity, every piece of debt, every piece of property linked to the currency is correlated to the currency. So your diversification strategy with any given currency, whether it's the peso, the dollar, the euro, the ruble, the lira, the whatever, they're all correlated. So then you're like, okay, well, this is great. I'm just going to buy the dollar. All the currencies are correlated to the dollar and the dollar's collapsing. <laughs> How fast is the dollar collapsing? Well, you can, you can watch it against real estate in Miami Beach, right? You know, you can want, all you got to do is look at the, at the dollar versus any scarce desirable piece of property. So what's the dollar valued in versus a Picasso, a Leonardo da Vinci, a city block in New York City, a desirable piece of bench, beachfront property, and how about Palm Beach, right? What's happened to Palm Beach property in the past 10 years? If we come back to this issue, right, the issue of the day is Ukraine, but what's really going on here? The currency and the banking systems have collapsed in Afghanistan, in Iraq, they're falling and collapsing in Turkey. They've collapsed in Lebanon, in Syria, they're not trustworthy, in Ukraine and in Russia. Now I've just lassoed about 400 million people. And those 400 million people don't have a currency that they can use as a medium of exchange or a store of value. They don't have banks that they trust that work effectively. And what's the fundamental issue here? It's like if you don't have a property or a currency with which you can store economic energy, that's like being a type 1 diabetic. You cannot store fat on your body. It means that you can eat as much as you want, you will literally starve to death. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.